Hey everybody, Nick Dingle here again with another Unity 5 video. We're having a look at navigating the scene view, okay? And these are the basics of moving around the scene view and working with your objects, okay? The first thing you need to learn is most of it's controlled through the mouse. Now, if I right click and hold down on it, I'll get a little eyeball tool there, and that means I can look around my level. Simple as that. One awesome feature of Unity that I love and I think all programs need, let's say I'm looking up and that's not far enough, I can actually move my cursor, my mouse cursor, through the top of the screen and it pops out the bottom and I can just keep on going as far as I want. And that actually works with most of the tools I'm going to talk about today. Second thing is if I want to zoom in on something, okay, you use the scroll wheel. So if I scroll up, I zoom in. Well, it's not zooming, it's actually moving forward. And then I scroll back to move out. Now, if that's not good enough, if I've got the right zoom level and I can't rotate to look at what I want, I can push in my scroll wheel and I get what's called the pan tool, the little hand you see there. And I can move around the level left, right and up and down just by moving the mouse a little bit. Now, if you lack the scroll wheel, okay, you can also pan by clicking on the hand up here and just clicking and dragging with the left mouse. Okay, and when you're done, you can just change back to your other tools that you're working with. All right, so that's some simple navigation. The other ways to navigate, there's probably heaps of ways that I won't teach you this lesson, but just another one. Let's say I want to zoom in on this guy. All I have to do is first of all, click on him. If I press F on the keyboard for focus, zooms right in, okay? And that's just a little handy trick just to move around. You can also double click on objects to have a look at them up in the hierarchy, okay? Now, with that done, let's have a look at selecting objects and working with them. So for example, I'm going to look at this stack over here. If I want to select an object, you just left click on it. You'll see it gets a little highlight and it also gets a tool. Okay. And this is called a handle. Okay. And different handles do different things. And we'll look at those in a second. Let's just look at selecting. If I want to select all of these crates, I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to continue to select the rest of the cubes. Okay. Now when I move something, they all move together. Okay, other ways that you can do that. So let's have a look. Up in the hierarchy, it showed me what I have selected by highlighting them. Let's say I want to select every single crate pink inside my level. I can actually click on the top one, hold the shift key on the keyboard and select the bottom one. And now I have every single crate selected in the game. Okay, let's say if you don't want all of those selected, I can actually hold the control key on the keyboard just like I did before and click on them up here to deselect like so or select them instead and that's like select them one by one so that's selecting objects the last way you can select things is by drawing a box so if i left click and i drag my mouse i get a box and if i capture some items inside of it so it has to capture them in full it can't just be a portion of it, it has to be the whole thing so you can see now these boxes are selected but this one isn't because i didn't capture him in full and again it highlights them in the hierarchy just to tell you what you have selected at the moment. Okay, so that's selecting objects. Now, the final thing I want to show you in this video is how to work with these little tools at the top, these handles that I mentioned before. The first one that's selected is called the translate tool. Okay, and translate is a very fancy way of saying move. Okay, if you're into 3D maths or matrices, you would understand why it's translate. But for the moment, what I'm going to do, I'm going to rotate and move my view. And you'll see this handle has three things. It's got a green line, a blue line, and a red line. And each one of those lines represents a coordinate. Okay, and what I mean by that is the red arrow here is the X coordinate. So X controls left and right. The blue coordinate is the Z, so that's in and out. And then the green arrow is up and down. Okay, and I'm gonna undo that movement by control Zing. All right, beautiful. If I want to move a couple of those coordinates at the same time, you see we've got these little squares that intersect. So if I want to move up and down and left and right at the same time, I can grab the blue one and I can do both of those. Move them down again. If I want to go in and out and up and down, I can use the red one. And then you've got a green one, which is left and right and in and out. Okay, so I suggest have a go at those because they're actually pretty handy to have a look at. The next handle that you can use is called the rotate handle. Now I'm just going to select one of these for this one. And we've got the same colors going on. We've got the red for the X, blue for the Z, and green for the Y. Now a lot of people get confused about why the heck is the red one on the front where it should really be the green one or this one should be the red one and so forth. Now what this actually means is if I grab this line 
and move it. I am rotating around the x-axis. So the way to think about that is, if you have a skewer, and you jam that skewer through the x-axis, which is left and right, so we jam it through this way, that's where it can rotate. It can now rotate around that skewer. So imagine the skewer in the middle of it, guys. And I'm rotating around it. Same thing for the Z. The Z goes in and out. So if I jam a skewer in that direction, I'm now rotating around the Z axis. Okay. And what you do to rotate is just move the mouse up and down. Don't try and rotate around. Just up and down. Okay. Same thing. Final one is the Y axis. If I put a skewer right up and down, I rotate around that axis. Okay. And that's the rotate tool. Pretty basic there. The third one up here is the scaling tool, okay? And that's exactly how it sounds. We can make it bigger or smaller. Same thing if I scale on the X, the Y, and the Z. This isn't going to work because it's a 2D object, but that would give it some fatness if we had that. The little gray box in the middle is all of them together. So if I grab that box, all of the axes grow. And if you watch the X, Y, and Z for scale, you see they all grow and they all shrink. Anyway. So that's the very last tool, basically. This fourth one is dedicated mainly to 2D games. So I'm going to go to 2D mode. I'm going to turn this tool on, and we get what's called the sprite. I like to call it the sprite tool. It's probably got a different name, to be honest. But basically, this allows us to um, scale and move at the exact same time. So if I just grab it, I can move it around my 2D world. And I can also grab the anchors, shrink, all right. And then I did see it. Did I have a rotate ability? No, I don't think I do. So anyway, oh, there we go, finally found it. So if I click next to one of the anchors, I thought you could, you can rotate as well. So the Sprite tool allows you to do all three of these handles in one go, all right? So what I'd recommend, guys, I'm actually going to stop the tutorial here, go and play with these things, have a go at them. If you have to make your own new game and just play with the handles and zooming and panning, have a go at that. The next video, I'm actually going to start building some of the world. So we're actually going to start playing with some stuff. So hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.